So, hi, I'm Robert Zimmermann and uh, I'm writing this little package for solving partial differential equations by the finite element method. And this summer I got the impression that it's time to enter HPC field, uh, so I started to parallelize it and how if you want to know how it went, just come and see me. That's great. Okay, so for a few years we have been developing a software packages for simulating nanostructures with quantum mechanics. Basically, all the high-level algorithms are written in Python, and for number crunching we use um, mostly C and libraries. It's uh, very well parallelized, so scales, at some cases, up to tens of thousands of CPU cores, and we can also utilize different accelerators with the code, uh, GPUs and Intel Xeon Pi's with the by my interface you heard today. So if you want to hear more about how, how we have done that, okay, please come to my poster. Okay, so my poster is about using the IPython notebook as a lab notebook. So almost any scientist or engineer, at least the one that's working in lab, has a lab notebook and it's the primary tool to work with. But it's, as you can see on the left top side, one from Enrico Fermi. So it has graphics, formulas, calculations, and all that stuff. And basically, until maybe the IPython notebook, it was not possible to have something like that in an electronic form. And with the IPython notebook and extensions that can be added to it, at least I believe that uh, this is something that can at least extend the lab notebook to the traditional one. So imagine you have to compare a book to a book summary. For this, I made a visualization tools with which I'm using word vector representations. So each word is represented by a vector. So you have a huge 300 dimensional vectors and these are then projected down to 2D and plotted. So you compa can compare them visually. And this gives you a bird's eye view of the book, which you can explore and you can, for instance, take the Wikipedia article on Game of Thrones with all the character names, and then you can have the revision from 2013 and the one from 2015, and you see which characters got added and which got removed. So this is an intuitive, for a human, very intuitive way of comparing large text sources that might be too big to just list. Uh, hello, my name is Danny Genak. I'm a PhD student of astrophysics at the Department of Theoretical Physics and Astrophysics at Faculty of Science in Beno. And mainly with my supervisor, Victor, we are preparing uh, educational material for new subject numerical methods in astrophysics uh, using uh, IPython notebooks and simplicity of Python language. We are uh, try to change mind of our students about computer from a thing to a tool for effective solving of their physical, respectively astrophysical problems. And the benefits of Python we are illustrating using uh, the implementation, the same algorithm in Fortran, uh, which is another frequently used language for scientific computing. And by the way, we try teach our students how to use Git for uh, teamwork. Thank you. Okay, so my uh, poster is about the bindings that I've been working recently. So you can have different uh, motivation to write bindings. Our f main motivation to write bindings to C++ was that we want to extend the group of users of our library. At the same time, I want to compare the results with the old Fortran implementation, so I work with CFFI to work on uh, Fortran uh, bindings. And we ended up actually joining to an intercomparison studies that were performed in Fortran, so we had to use Python to call Fortran code that uses C++ at some point. And it really works. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
my name is Gijs. I'm a software engineer uh, in the field of astronomy. And uh, for the last couple of years, I've been working a lot with very fragile frameworks and libraries. And um, so I've been playing with Docker a lot to make these fragile libraries easier to install. And um, uh, for newcomers, uh, it's easier to, to get started. Um, uh, so you have nice little redistributable containers, boxes uh, to, to install and distribute your software. Um, but my talk is more about Rodriguez, which is a web interface based on Django. Uh, which you can use for uh, scheduling uh, containers, compute containers in the cloud. And um, I've been working on a, a, a standard for a compute scheduling with JSON encoded parameters for these containers. And uh, that's about it. If you want to know more about Docker, then talk to me. <laughs> So hey guys, my name is Jan Peleg and I'm a computer scientist and I know it's a bit strange here but I'm only a computer scientist. Now I like in my spare time to find and exploit security vulnerabilities. Now <laughs> this is what computer scientists do. Now the thing is these exploits might be pretty hard to find and time consuming. So I thought as a normal programmer that I will use machine learning to deal with that because I don't like to see, think for myself. So the thing, what, what I started doing is simple lexical analysis to a neural network and that got all my students to, mar to a mark A and my code sucked. Now, the thing is, it's pretty complicated to make, to make something that analyze a code and uh, to, that will analyze a code with any sort of logic and will produce it will produce a score, so come to my posture. So, hi everybody, I'm Paul. Uh, I am a data scientist in a startup in Paris called Pricing Assistant, and we have one big problem, uh, which is to determine if the right left, uh, left top side product is the same as the right bottom side product. Uh, since they have not the same name, the not the same image, not the same description. Uh, so I will present you a method uh, we use at in this startup using a lot of Python scientific tools, a lot of various techniques uh, to be able to compare two HTML files uh, and determine if they represent the same product. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Rob Reiling. Um, my, uh, my poster is entitled uh, Introducing Scientific Python Within Research Oriented Companies and Academia. Um, I assume all of you are using Python, but probably a lot of your colleagues are not, and maybe they should also adapt Python as their, uh, their research tool. Um, so at the company that I work for, Demcon, which does uh, contract R&D and uh, engineering, we have uh, kind of transitioned from using Excel and MATLAB to uh, using Python over the last year. And on my poster, I will um, tell you um, why this is a good idea, how you can transition your group from using uh, some other tools to using scientific Python, what kind of training you need, what kind of tools you need, uh, how you need to support your uh, colleagues. Um, and I'll also go into the differences between um, research group in academia and research groups um, in um, uh, at companies. Hello, my name is Felix. Uh, I'm from the Department of Biomaterials uh, in Potsdam. And my study was on bone, in particular osteocytes, which are cells embedded in bone, which form an extensive um, network I analyzed 3D Im microscopical images of these bone cells and performed this, um, several steps to analyze these images, starting with thresholding, segmentation, um, performed a skeletonization in 3D, uh, converted the skeleton into a network structure, which I an analyzed. I got a lot of results um, concerning the orientation, and now I'm trying to make my tools available for my colleagues, but also for other people who are interested um, 
in these sort of things. And if you want to, to share some experience, what's happening in this process, please come to my poster. Hi all, I am Ardita from the University of Nottingham and I'm here to talk about Ecstasy. Believe it or not, in this context, it is a software framework that provides insights from biomolecular simulation analysis. It is a collaborative project across the UK and the US and Europe, across eight universities, and its core algorithms are written in Python. I'm showing one of these core algorithms and methods here. And if you can imagine that the different colors of these curved lines represent the trajectories of atoms. Then we use the SciPy uh, linear algebra to uh, map this into a reduced space. And then we use also the ND image package from SciPy and a couple of other modules to explore. Uh, to follow up, come and visit the Ecstasy poster. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Tim. So I've been trying to work on an uh, online classification or active learning problem. So the, the problem is that we have this net global network of uh, robotic telescopes. We want to follow up uh, astronomical transients, so exploding stars. And there's too many of these transients to follow up all of them all the time. Some of them are interesting, some of them aren't. So we're trying to do, um, do this early classification based on not very much data, so that then we can pick out the really interesting ones and follow those. Uh, so it's, it's first it's a sort of a model fitting and model comparison problem and then once you've got those initial sort of model fits and you can fit the sort of the whole range of possible parameters you then um, sort of forecast those forwards and try and figure out when the best time in the future is to make that single observation that you can afford so that then that will tell us exactly what kind of transient this is so it's active learning. Hi everyone, my name's Craig. Um, I work at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I'm developing software called GPR Max, which simulates electromagnetic wave propagation, principally for ground penetrating radar or GPR. You may actually have heard of GPR because it got a bit of a controversial mention um, very briefly and fleetingly on the news last week. Um, if you saw the story about the guys that think they found uh, a train load of Nazi gold in Poland, Apparently, they use GPR to find the tunnel that it's in, so a um, bit of controversy. Um, it's used in a lot of other applications in engineering, geophysics, um, and medicine. Um, so at the beginning of the year, um, I started to uh, redevelop uh, GPR Max, which was originally um, a C-based code, um, and I've been rewriting it in Python uh, using Cython and NumPy. So I'd be uh, happy to discuss my experience. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Remigius Vorg. I'm a biophysicist, and I work on some influenza virus proteins in, in a lab in, in Warsaw, Poland. Um, so we do mainly spectroscopic and microscopic experiments. At the very end, we need to handle the output text files. And for this purpose, we use, of course, Python. Uh, if you, if you uh, want to know how do we do this and if you want to know more about Influenza, please be welcome at my poster stand. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is G. I'm from Norwich, uh, joining the center and uh, the Genome and, uh, Center. Uh, so my t I'm, I'm a computer scientist and my team is mainly working on things related with phenotyping from different scales. So we're using drone, blimp, um, in-field phenotyping uh, device, and also the, the confocal microscope to understand how we extract the meaningful data or results to answer biology questions. So we are mainly working in agriculture industry. So if you're interested in, in, in plant research, uh, then you, we can talk. And at in this particular case, uh, we were, we're using Raspberry Pi. I mean, well, just talking about one aspect of my work, we're using Raspberry Pi and using Pi SciPy to, to control the Raspberry Pi to monitoring things, monitoring weed, weed growth in the field 24-7. And uh, we're using scikit-learn and scikit-image scikit -image to analyzing all these data as well. So if you want to talk, um, well, I will be in my post. Thank you. Now 
we have a couple of people without slides. Um, well, just Hello everyone, my name is Anton and I'm going to show how myself and my colleagues, a couple of them are around here, took the tools that we all like, developed a MOOC, a massive course, and uh, the tools, I mean the SciPy universe packages, and hosted it on the edX online platform, which does not really like these tools. Hi, my name is Edwin. Uh, I work at Leiden Observatory, and uh, I have a nice poster. Uh, you can recognize it from this logo, uh, this one. And um, uh, it's uh, for the Amuse framework, which was developed uh, in the group I work in over the last 10 years uh, to uh, use existing codes in astrophysics, so uh, computational astrophysics, uh, that model stars or gas or everything, and not just use them easily through a Python interface, but also couple them with Python and extend them with Python. And uh, well, this is extremely successful, so come check it out. Hi, my name is Steffi De. I'm software engineer developer in Fraunhofer IIS Institute in Germany, and my work is in collaboration with Austria Microsystems Foundry in Aus Austria. And we uh, have developed, mm, how to say, layout generators. Well, think about how many ICs you, you all use in your electronic devices and how complex their layouts are full of high and low voltage devices like transistors and such. Of course, the uh, IC designers want to have a feature which generate these layouts for them automatically with the given parameters and such. Currently, these layouts are generated with a, mm, with a language called Skill, and which is just uh, usable with a software called Cadence, which costs something like hundreds of thousands of euros. So we have generated these layouts using Python, and they are called PyCells. Come and see my poster. We're finished, so now the poster session. Yes. 